This is the Northampton Conservation Commission for the 25th of May, 2023. The commission is a group of unpaid volunteers who work to protect the natural environment of Northampton. We are concerned with the eight interests defined in the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act. Our duties also include open space acquisition and management. We operate in a way that's consistent with open meeting law requirements. All date, times, and agendas are posted in advance, and we invite public comment during our meetings. However, we ask the public to limit their comments to issues that are within our purview. Today's agenda includes a request for a determination of applicability to determine if building demolition within a riverfront area for the Mill River is subject to the Wetlands Act or the Wetlands Ordinance, um, that on East Hampton Road. Uh, we also have a request for a certificate of compliance on Coles Meadow Road uh, for a, a previously issued order of conditions. Uh, we did have some minutes, as I recall, Sarah. Yep. Um, what was the date? I'm, I'm uh, not having that screen in front of me right now. Mm -hmm. October 27th. Yes. Okay. So uh, first, well, we'll go in a little out of order. We'll ask for approval of minutes. Um, anybody have any, uh, uh, make a motion to approve those minutes? I'm so move. Is there a second? Second. Any uh, modifications or amendments or other discussion about those minutes? If not, all in favor. Uh, Sarah, roll call. Jen? Yes. David? Yes. Mason? Yes. Randy? Yes. Paul? Yes. And Kevin? Yes. Uh, <clears throat> now I'll ask first if there's any general public comment not having to do with an item on our specific agenda for today. If not, we'll go to the first case. Uh, a request for determination of applicability to determine if building demolition within the riverfront of the Mill River is subject to the Wetlands Act or the Wetlands Ordinance. This is Eversource Energy at East Hampton Road. Good evening, Melissa Cody from Tie and Bond on behalf of Eversource. Um, if acceptable, could I please share my screen? Yep. Oh, yes. Great. Thank you. All right. All right. Can you, are you able to see the figure? Excellent. Yes. Um, so the, the site uh, on East Hampton Road, Route 10, is uh, an LPG facility uh, that uh, is an asset Eversource acquired in recent years. Um, <clears throat> you may be familiar with it. The Mill River Diversion um, at South Street is to the east of the site. Uh, the property sits at the top of the rise uh, above Earl Street's intersection uh, with the traffic lights at Route 10. Uh, and the bike path is uh, immediately north of the, the subject parcel. Um, so I hope that helps orient everyone with this location. Um, the goal is to uh, demolish the existing single story building at this location. It is a it is slab on grade construction, so there's no basement. Um, the building is unused and not needed. Um, and I believe when uh, when Eversource applied for a demolition permit, it, it alerted, the, the city system works beautifully. It alerted uh, Eversource to the fact that they uh, might be within an area subject to conservation commission jurisdiction. And indeed, um, a portion of this work is, I'm going to, delicately try to zoom in a little bit here so it's a little bit easier to see. Um, tie and bond delineated um, approximate mean high water of the Mill River um, and also brought in or identified based on LIDAR contours the 100 year flood elevation associated with the Mill River so that we could identify the limits of 100 foot buffer zone, 200 foot riverfront area and the local 40 foot buffer zone to the LSF. Um, so the 100 foot is shown in green, the limits of the 40 foot buffer to the LSF are shown in purple, and the dark and light blue is the limits of 200 foot riverfront area. 
Um, the okay. outline of the building is shown in red. <clears throat> and an erosion control barrier, a straw wattle, um, that was placed on the ground before they um, understood the limits of jurisdiction uh, is actually uh, outlined here in fuchsia. Um, so the plan is to demolish the structure and the upper um, four to six inches of the slab and then backfill with, with gravel to stabilize the footprint. Uh, access will be via the driveway off of Earl Street. Uh, they'll live load material into dumpsters and then um, that's the essentially the limit of work here. The mature trees will be protected. They will not be removed as part of this scope of work. I was, uh, when, when I was reading that uh, removing the top uh, four to six inches of the slab, how thick is the slab? Will there be any slab left? Um, that's a good question. I can follow up with Sarah on the thickness of the slab, um, but essentially they don't want to, it is above grade, so they don't want to leave a, they don't want to leave the slab in place. They want the, the area to be flush with adjacent grades. I know, I was just trying to get a sense of whether mm -hmm. there would still be an impervious uh, area there with remaining. Uh, uh, so anyway, that, mm -hmm. that was the basis of my question. Understood. I will, I can follow up on that. Okay. Melissa, I know it's not part of this request for determination, but is there a mm -hmm. subsequent plan for the site? I was just wondering if vegetative cover might be possible instead of gravel, although I, I don't think it makes any difference one way or another. Um, I'm not aware of a long-term plan other than um, the building has been unused for some time and they don't want it to be a nuisance attractant. Mm -hmm. Questions or comments from commissioners? The, the building was basically an office building then? Correct. I mean, it's where they put the sass and the gas, so I wasn't sure whether everything else is going to remain there or the um, building the, had the, something to do with that. The, this, the, the rear portion of the facility will remain as, as is, so the, the fenced gated portion of the site will remain in operation. So you said this, this is where they put the mercaptans in the gas? Is that it? Yeah. Okay. There uh, uh, septic systems or uh, other utilities in the ground that are also going to have to be removed? Um, utilities have been, uh, services have been disconnected. Uh, they'll be abandoned in place. Yeah, so capped and abandoned. Yep. And there's quite a steep slope on the front of the there building. Is. Is that right? yeah. There is. Okay. Yeah, you can actually see a section of, I believe, retaining wall. Along yeah, the side. Right. Right. Nice looking and our, one of the things that was in Sarah's report that I wondered about as well is that because there is such a, a, a steep drop off that even with uh, erosion control, I wonder if there is uh, uh, there are catch basins and subsurface um, storm sewers under the paved area of the road of rural street. Um, and if therefore those uh, catch basins would need to be covered during the construction in case any debris goes downhill, because it is very steep. Um, with, uh, I think Everstar should be absolutely amenable to a, a requirement that there be catch, let, catch basin inlet protection as part of the, the work until the site is, or the work is completed. Is, is there already existing runoff from that slope into the Mill River? I don't think there's any direct connection. Um, you know, the, the slope itself, with the exception of the retaining wall, is vegetated. Um, okay. So I, I think most of it is infiltrated. Okay. And whatever sheet flow 
is coming off there now goes on to Earl Street, and that also goes back to the question about whether there are catch basins and uh, subsurface yeah. storms. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> yep. I mean, I assume that if there are storm sewers, they go directly into the Mill River right away somewhere down there. But um, uh, it, so it, it ends up it, 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 uh, in the Mill River. But um, right now, um, the, the the concern that I would have is if during demolition there would be a, a, an unusual a potential for an unusual amount of. Um, contaminants going into the sheet flow. So once it's all cleared up, it would go back basically to yeah. being equivalent to the current state. Yeah. Other questions or comments from commissioners? And just to make sure, it looks like the, uh, the driveway and paved area uh, come off of uh, Earl Street and then are in the upland um, side, uh, upgrading side of the, the building. And I assume that's where all of the work will take place, that all uh, the dem de demolished uh, debris will be brought uh, uh, to that, surface, that paved surface area into mm -hmm. dumpsters and trucks and then carried away, that there won't be any work. Uh, what your fuchsia limit of work implies that, but I just wanted to check. C correct. Um, they'll they'll utilize the existing stable surfaces, yeah. um, the, the paved areas. All right. And, yeah. um, any comments or questions from the public? If not, um, it's a, a an RDA, so we don't need to uh, close a hearing. Um, someone want to make a uh, a motion if we're confident that with the provision of the erosion control and a, an added condition that if there are catch basins um, uh, that uh, in the rural street that those would be covered. Uh, any other additional conditions we might want to require? If not. Um, we could issue a negative determination that yes, there is a part of the work that's within the jurisdictional area, but it's not going to uh, uh, modify or, or uh, degrade uh, from existing conditions. So that would be a checkbox two. Um, uh, issue a negative determination checkbox two. Someone want to make a motion to that effect? Was there? Uh, can I ask a question? Was there part of this in the? Uh... Endangered species uh, up there. Um, yes, a portion of it is. However, um, it is exempt from the Endangered Species Act. Um, the provision at three twenty one CMR ten point one four three allows for the the demolition of of buildings. And, okay. and yeah, um, I did confirm that with Lauren Glorioso. Yeah, and priority habitat is also just outside the limit of work if I read them read them map correctly right okay okay someone want to make a motion I'll also move um, with the condition that uh, the catch basins be protected and there is one about 20 feet down from the uh, retaining wall I drove by there today I see okay good I'll second all right, motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor, roll call, Sarah? Jen? Yes. David? Yes. Mason? Yes. Randy? Yes. Paul? Yes. And Kevin? Yes. All right, unanimous, thank you. Thank you all, have a good evening. Very good, thank you. You too. Now we have a request for a certificate of compliance uh, at Oak Knoll Estates, Coles Meadow Road. Um, I don't know if anybody here is uh, to uh, speak to that. Um, well, or... we're, we're um, part of the Oak Knoll Estates and uh, 
we are trying to sell property and we in the process we discovered this Just one state your name please say again state your name oh joan chaffee pardon me okay. and Thank we're you. we live at 96 coles meadow road and we're part of six houses in the Oaknola states and um in the process of selling our house, it was discovered that there was an order of condition attached to the deed that went back to 1999. And we purchased our house in 2000. And uh, so it has become a problem for uh, passing on a clean deed, okay. even though there's been numerous properties uh, bought and sold um, this has never come up before, but here we are with a sticky wicket. <laughs> so um, Berkshire Design uh, has helped us and uh, they got a wetlands person to come and review it. And um, they've come and looked at it and have submitted the certificate for us. And just some additional background from staff. Um, you know, this was recorded as required, but rather than being in the, the main section of the registry of deeds, it's in land court. And that can be a little convoluted to find, even, you know, even for attorneys who are used to doing title searches if they're not specifically oh. looking for it. So I suspect that's probably why this made it all this time without being discovered. Um, so you know, the order did require wetland replication. It required conditions during construction. Obviously, we can't go back in time and look at how the wetland was constructed, but it clearly does have at least 75% wetland vegetation. It, it looks really good and robust. Um, the project engineer was able to remove some old silt fence that was still there. Um, the crossing looks pretty good. I, and there was happily no additional encroachment into wetland areas or buffer zones. So I don't see any issue with issues, issuing a certificate for this one. Thank you, sir. Yeah, no, I, uh, I was pleased to see that no, no yard creep had happened, that that's usually one of the things that after a, this much time- um, Yeah, I was amazed. Inevitable, yeah. So very good. All right, any further discussion among commissioners? If not, someone want to make a motion to grant a certificate of compliance as requested. So Jen moved. says yes. And the second? Second. I'll second. Yep. So got a couple of seconds there. Um, I'll third it. Any, any further discussion? <laughs> if not, all in favor, roll call, Sarah. Jen? Yes. David? David? Yes. Mason? Yes. Randy? Yes. Paul? Yes. And Kevin? Yes. All right. Unanimous. Thank you. And Joan, do you want me to email this right to you? That, that would be perfect. Okay, we'll do. Because then I can forward it to my attorney and the process can continue. Okay, very good. <laughs> Thank you so you. much. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. Bye. All right. Any other uh, business before the commission? Is there any uh, emergency or things come in the mail that we should be talking about? No emergencies or other issues. I think the only other update for me was my request to stop by and sign the conservation restriction for the- oh, Right, right, right. Thanks for the reminder. No, no big hurry. I just want to have this ready to record it as soon as the state says that we can do that. We're unfortunately yeah. waiting for their CR review for which they're really backed up on. Um, but we need this to be able to close out our state grant and get our $400,000 reimbursement. So you don't all need to come um, just uh, four or more. I won't be around the next two weeks. I'm taking uh, some beach vacation time. Um, nice. I'm on ah, the table yeah. in front of my desk with a pen. So just okay. find your name. And sign okay. Up. What beach are you going to? Uh, we're going down to Jekyll Island in Georgia and also Assateague and Hunting Island. So oh, nice. Little I was at Jekyll Island uh, about, about a month ago. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's nice down. I'm excited. My son and I went camping on Assateague two summers ago, and it was lovely. I love it there. It's yeah. Great. Sounds great. Sounds great. Live vicariously um, and go sign the restriction. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Take, take yeah. pictures. <laughs> we'll do. And then we, we don't have a meeting um, June 8th. We didn't, both because I'll be away and because there were no permits to consider. Um, mm -hmm. Nothing on the agenda at the moment for 
June 22nd, but I think DPW is coming in with an application for a pretty timely sewer main reconstruction. Okay. All right. Um, well, I will be in all likelihood, the plan is that I will not be here on the 22nd. I will be in the Adirondacks. Um, and Paul, I wanted to compare notes and see, because you've just been recently out there, right? Um, I was supper? supposed to, and it oh. fell apart at the midnight hour. Ah, and well. I didn't make it. So I missed out on rain, bugs, and temperatures in the 20s. <laughs> <laughs> it's a shame. That's how unfortunate. <laughs> yeah, it was really broke my heart. <laughs> but yes, I'd be happy to advise. All right, good, good, because I know you've been there before, and I have not been, I've been, you know, as you know, in the area, Lake Lila and Lowe's and uh, so forth, but not not this particular one, so. Okay. I'll uh, save I'll some test. black flies for you. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> well, I'm I'm hoping by the week of the 19th of, of June they'll be mostly gone. We we yeah. went about this time last year and had good luck. So. Uh, well, if you stay in your tent the whole day and then wait till the sun goes down, sun goes come down. Out, yeah. The black flies are gone. <laughs> right. You can't see. <laughs> so, um, what do you think about um, uh, about? Moving back to in-person, Zoom is certainly very convenient. There's no travel time and you can do it, you know, if I'm in Vermont, I can I can do it as well as doing it here in Northampton. So um, it's, I, I, I'm, I'm okay either way. I have to say that there is something different about being a commission sitting at a table and having the public in another part of the room uh, making comments directly to yeah. us. Uh, mm -hmm. Then it just it just is it's it's it kind of grittier and more real in some important way. Yeah. So I, I wouldn't like to do this permanently, but uh, uh, I know people have different sensibilities. I'm I'm part of an a cappella group and a couple of other groups that some people are adamant about. Hey, no masks, no testing. Let's just get back together. And other people say, Oh no, never. We're not ready for that yet. So so people have really different sensibilities. So uh, I, 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 I'm interested in. Um, first, whether people are feeling cautious, like, okay, well, they say the, 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 the COVID um, crisis is over, but a lot of people are still very um, conservative about both COVID and once having had that experience, um, that there's these other um, illnesses that uh, are very transmissible by air, uh, aerosol, uh, by being in the same room. Um, and so I, I, I want to first give space for anybody's uh, caution to be give voice because that's a, a something we can take into consideration. You're going to have to wear masks. No, we, we don't require anymore. it. We, we, we could as a commission if somebody thought that would help them feel more comfortable. That's a buzzkill right there. I mean, yep. <laughs> <laughs> I'm personally in a post mask mentality. And when I relaxed my mask wearing in April, I got COVID and thanks to Paxlovid, I flushed it out of my system in four days. It was like a mild cold. Now I feel like I've gotten a booster that'll last me till July. Yeah, but, I just got um, my booster too. But. Yeah, so I, I could go either way on it. I mean, I would love to meet everybody in person. And I do think that there is a, a a special, I would imagine it's it's nicer to have people together and people coming to make their presentations. But it does help elders who have mobility problems. It helps um, mm -hmm. single parents with childcare problems. Um, and um, it just is really convenient. So I'm open to either way, frankly. Well, and when I first joined, uh, there was a, two years before I uh, became chair, and the prior chair uh, uh, used to take everybody out to the brewery um, behind City Hall. Um, if the meetings were meetings that ended by 6.30, 7 o'clock, hey, let's go have a beer together. And, uh, Whoa. So we can do things like that if we're meeting in person. So um, <laughs> uh, Mason will be yeah. that. I, I, I used to work for a company like that. that had a refrigerator full of beer at the end of the day, so you left your problems at work and you didn't take yeah. them home. <laughs> you took the dog or something like that. Yeah. Well, do you study, say, Randy? 
That, you know, one of the things we may want to think about is, is decide to meet either Zoom regularly or in person regularly and then based on the agenda. Like I say, if, if we could decide to meet in person and if the, if the agenda is simple, like a DPW is going to come in, there's nothing controversial, we could say, you know, we'll make this one a Zoom. Yes, that's true. Good thought. Good thought. Because there's yeah. to, like today's meeting, if you could be wrapped up in half an hour. And it's going to yep. take people yeah. half an hour of travel time. It's not necessarily yeah. worth it. Right. Yeah, right, right. Sarah, how does nice it work with Zoom? In person. <laughs> uh, how does it work with Zoom, Sarah? Do you have to set up a schedule with them? Or? So we do. So I have to schedule all the meetings with Zoom. It's not difficult at all. Um, and some meetings that like ours have a different password every time. That's because I've been Zoom bombed and this helps to prevent yep. it a little bit. <laughs> um, <laughs> But people, you know, the the public could still watch but not participate. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, the way the like, planning it, board, but it's difficult to try and you know deal with public comment, you know, consistently during the meeting. Yeah, and, sometimes and during the meeting is right. a difficult thing too because the public insists on entering back and forth between each other rather than addressing the board. The commission, right? Yeah, like the, the planning board will only take comments uh, via the chat in Zoom, but some like city council only accepts public comment at the beginning of the meeting and doesn't it open up, open it up otherwise. So we can uh, we, we can tailor our, our approach a little bit. Um, yeah, as Randy was saying, we could decide, OK, in, in uh, if we could default to meeting in person and then if uh, uh, a given meeting was going to be very brief. We could decide, okay, that's not worth the uh, additional effort. Um, um, or we decide, hey, it's going to get out by six o'clock. Let's go have a beer. So uh, <laughs> and that that could be uh, an option too. But um, I kind of like that idea about it. defaulting to uh, being in person. Um, like I say, our next meeting I won't be here for unless something blows up like did for Paul and, and our, our, our long standing plan to camp uh, falls apart, but I don't think so. <laughs> uh, we usually, we go, we even even if it's torrential and cold, um, you know, that's we're, right. we're, we're out there. Uh, that's what happened to us last year. It was yeah. not pleasant, but we somehow loved every minute of it anyway, so. Uh, <laughs> With the recent solar activity though, you may uh, luck out and get some uh, northern lights. Some northern, northern lights, right. Uh, I, I, that, that's where I saw them, and they were gorgeous. Uh -huh. The whole sky was just uh, covered up there. It was in Long Pond. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. Right. Long Lake, you mean? Long Lake, yeah. yeah. Yeah, which is only a few miles from where we're talking about, right? Great. All right. So uh, I would suggest then uh, that's, that's the next question. Sarah, we often do a single meeting in July in a single meeting in August, historically. Um, what's the application um, funnel look like? Uh, is it realistic that we could do single meetings? For, yeah, for I think so. Um, and so <clears throat> June 22nd, like I said, there's probably one DPW application, maybe a request for certificate of compliance or two. Uh, the deadline for that is today, basically. So I don't think we'll be seeing much more than that. And I'm not aware of anything else big that's coming in, but there are always surprises. So, yeah. <laughs> well, um, uh, right now I'm scheduled to be away the first two weeks in July uh, and the first two weeks in August. Um, and well, let's see, uh, no, it wouldn't. Um, uh, yeah, no, it's a, I'm going to be um, bicycling in Croatia for the first, the, what would be the 13th. Um, <laughs> uh, but I'll be, I'll be, Area I'll be back. I'll yeah. be back. Uh, if, 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 if we want to have a single meeting in, in July, I'll be back for the fourth uh, Thursday. And similarly in um, August, um, well, in August, I could do it because I'll be in. I'll be in a place where I could get on Zoom. So, uh, but if we're going to try to meet in person, uh, let's uh, do the the fourth Thursday tentatively, the fourth Thursday in both July and August, 
and we'll uh, uh, plan on having them be in-person meetings at the hearing uh, hearing room at City Hall. And then we can, uh, Sarah, be in touch beforehand and decide whether in fact that still makes sense, but let's have that sure. be our, our plan default. Okay, we'll do. Um, okay. And if, you know, if they look really, like really short agendas or we don't have anything coming up, right. Right. then I'll keep you posted. And if we do Great. meet the first round at the uh, uh, brewery is on me, so. Oh, okay. okay. All, All right. right. Anything else? Do we have a vacancy on the commission or are we at full yeah. strength? We do We're have sure. a vacancy, although I spoke to someone who sounded really interested and had a you know a background in like I think it was plant ecology. Oh um, and had recently moved to Northampton and was looking for a way to get involved. So I don't know if the mayor has spoken to her or if she's yeah, or if she followed through on that, but she seemed like potentially a good candidate. Cool. Oh. But in a, uh, right now in Ward 2, we need candidates for both uh, city council and uh, school board. We, we, we are missing candidates for either of those, and the, the current occupants are not going to run. So mm. if anybody knows any Ward 2 that uh, uh, might be interested, we, we can, we, 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 we can I'll, I'll be supportive. I'm not going to be the person, but I, I'll be supportive <laughs> of whoever wants to be. You're already spoken for, Kevin. Yeah, the Conservation Commission is plenty. Yep. Um, and I'll I'll be represented the commission uh, taking Jen's place uh, on the uh, CPA uh, yeah. community um, preservation. CPA. Yeah. So, um, all right. Anything else? If not, 